Hello and welcome to the E Squared Media Network's second webcast, live webcast. This time we're going to be talking about parenting. Specifically, we're going to be talking about educating and equipping our families, especially now in the 21st century. It's a tougher job than I think parents have ever had to have, well, probably withstanding the old frontier days or Neanderthal days, but uh, it is a tough time to be a parent. And I know for myself and for my wife, man, it, it was really tough for us uh, in the beginning because you think you know everything, but you don't. We'll get to this in just a bit. First, before we totally launch off, we want to thank our sponsors. We've got Wisdom Matrix as a sponsor this time, and, and we are super excited. These guys... Dana and Gary Avant are amazing people. They will help you with your SEO, your website, your branding, your marketing, understanding all the algorithms that Google has. So if you've got an enterprise, a website, a blog, um, a store, whatever it may be, a ministry, they're the guys you want to contact in order to get eyeballs on your website. Again, it's Wisdom Matrix. Our second sponsor today is BizVid Communications. The guys there, Kaz Taylor and Bill Gruber, those guys will make your video dreams come true. They'll take whatever idea you have. If all you have is just a vague dream, they'll help you write the script, storyboard it, produce the video, and get it out to television, get it on the web. Wherever you want your video to be shown, they can produce it for you. And more than anything, they understand that it's a relationship that gets these project done, not, projects done, not just hammers and nails and let's just get the project. So it's, it's pretty cool working with Bill and Kaz. I just wanted to have you guys check out BizVid. Uh, their website as well as Wisdom Matrix is on our website. Finally, we've, we're partners with Pathios. Pathios.com is where, well, they say it perfectly. It's where you can join in the conversation regarding evangelical uh, ministries today. So check out Pathios.com. You'll see our podcast as well as so many others uh, that uh, deal with contemporary issues that we Christians face today. So as I was saying, my wife and I, you know, we did what most people do. Um, we, before we really jumped into parenthood, we got a dog. We actually got two dogs, and we thought that that would help prepare us for parenthood. Um, in all reality, uh, that's kind of like coaching my son's t-ball team and then saying that I'm ready to manage the New York Yankees. Um, the, the two are just light years beyond. I mean, you can't really just leave your kid with a big bowl of food and water and go away for a weekend vacation. Uh, well, at least you're not allowed to do that anymore. Um, <laughs> but then reality sets in when you have kids. We have four boys at our house. Um, yeah, I should learn their names at some point. But we have an 11-year-old, twin 7-year-olds, and a 3-year-old. And learning to parent them, it's more like this, this, this movie that my son and I were watching recently where the main character, he gets tasked to, to take this flower uh, to this destination. He has to climb this mountain peak and through the snow and, I mean, just treacherous thing. And then once he gets there, the mission's still not over. He has to actually face the League of Assassins and if Bruce Wayne can survive, then he's trained to do what he needs to do. So, yes, in all, for all intents and purposes, when it comes to parenting, I'm Batman. So, <laughs> basically, we're looking at uh, some pearls of wisdom today from four different amazing people. We've got Pam Rohr from the Blended, uh, Blending Your Fam Step Families podcast. Pam is an expert um, life coach and author when it comes to blended families. She's going to have some amazing uh, things to share. And she's actually f calling or going to be Skyping us from Indiana where she's with her daughter who just had a baby uh, two days ago. And so she's going to be taking care, of that, um, taking care of us while she takes care of her daughter and her new granddaughter. We also have my dad, Rod Drexler. Uh, from uh, Real Stuff My Dad Says. Now, Dad, I've obviously talked to my dad my whole life. Today, we're going to talk to him about particularly being a grandpa and what does that mean today. Uh, too many times we see Disneyland grandparents who just want to be fun and friendly and make sure that the grandkids have a great time around them. My dad sees that there's another level of grandparenting that needs to be accomplished. Thirdly, we'll wrap up today with Darren Streblow. Uh, Darren is a stand-up comic, clean comic. He performs on stages all around the country, and today we get to hear about how he has raised his four boys when oftentimes being faced with a, a work, basically, that pulls him uh, on the road. So if you're a stand-up comic, you can totally relate to this. If you are in sales, if you work in IT, if you're a consultant, if um, there's any sort of line of work or line of responsibilities that pull you away from home for days at a time, Darren's going to give us some advice on how to battle that battle. But first, first we're going to launch with uh, 
with Carrie Green. Carrie is um, a pastor, an author, um, and a dad uh, living in Colorado. Oh, one more thing. If I didn't have my head screwed on, I'd probably forget it. We do need to remind all of our viewers, before we launch with Carrie, you can ask Carrie questions yourself. Why listen to me all the time? You can join in the conversation. Uh, there's chat roll right underneath of our screen here, and you can just chat in your questions. Um, Joel Fieri, our executive producer, is going to be fill, uh, going to be looking at all those uh, questions coming in, and and he'll be uh, asking me your questions, and we'll get those on air. You can also get us on Twitter. We are at um, uh, the best way to do it probably is doing our hashtag. Join the conversation by hashtag E squared Webcast. That's E two webcast that hashtag you can also get us at our normal uh, uh twitter handle it's at at e squared media network that's at e the number two media network or even on uh facebook and we're at e2 network or e squared network there as well you found us before you can find us today and obviously if you're watching the webcast join in the chat right below all that to say let's talk to carrie carrie green how are you doing how's colorado today Colorado is bright and sunny and springy, and I'm just loving it today. Thanks for having me on, Jefferson. Awesome. Now, Carrie, um, first off, I guess, uh, how many kids do you have? How many do you have under your roof? <laughs> Those are two different <laughs> answers. And, uh, and how long have you and your wife been married? My wife and I have been married, be 26 years this year, and we have five children. And to answer that, that funny question, we have all five of them under our roof right now. Our oldest and his wife and their two grand, their two boys are living with us to save money to move to Missouri to be near her family. So, so we're really a, t- a tight unit right now. <laughs> a tight unit, <laughs> meaning close confines as well as tight relationally. <laughs> yeah, and we have my wife's parents who live with us as well. So. Wow, wow. So pretty much you have a dorm more so than a house. Yeah, we joke we're the modern-day Waltons. That's awesome. <laughs> now, Carrie, um, a lot of parents today, and I, I've heard this from, from one pastor after another, there's this school of thought out there that too much emphasis is being put on uh, GPA and MVP and all these other acronyms that, that basically spell out accolades for our kids. What pastors are saying today at a lot of different parenting conferences is GOD needs to be the number one priority. If we could just, when, when I die, son, when I die, I want you to be there in eternity with me. That's the number one priority getting our kids saved and understand Jesus' saving grace. But you take things to a whole nother level. You say, yeah, salvation, obviously that's important, but you talk about something you call a radical faith. I guess explain that out, flush that out for us. What is radical faith and, and what do you mean by passing it on to generations? Yeah, well, I, I would first say the word radical, I debated about whether I should use that because it's kind of a catchphrase right now. We hear about radical SEO and radical business and radical everything. But but when I looked up the word itself, uh, I really was struck with the need to use it because radical means beyond the ordinary, beyond what is, is normal for people in a, in a particular sphere. In this case, we're talking about parenting and about kids be, having faith that is radical. And so when I say radical, I mean faith like Jesus had, hmm. faith in the Father that is based in reality of who he is, not the reality of who we think he is or want him to be. It's not a comfortable faith necessarily. It's not always a faith that gets you accolades, but it is a faith that I believe is pleasing to God. And so I, I really stress, you know, it's great to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's what we want. But they're on this planet for more than just being saved, more than just being good kids. Mm. They're on this planet to be on mission for Christ. And, and that's the kind of faith I have, have endeavored with my wife's great help to pass on to my children. So that's kind of what I mean by radical faith. That's whole next level uh, Christianity we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, it really is. Now, Carrie, there's, um, there's a story that I always like to tell that when I was reading some of your stuff that kept popping into my mind over and over again. When I was in junior high, um, I was asleep one night. I was on the basketball team, believe it or not, because <laughs> I'm short now, but uh, then I was tall. And night before a game, Middle of the night, probably 2.33 in the morning, my dad comes knocking on my bedroom door, waking me up in the middle of the night. And he kind of nudges me a little bit and says, hey, Jefferson, there's, there's a fire next door. Uh, I need you to get up, and we need to get everybody out and, uh, and get moving. So I get up, and since it's a game day, our coach had us wear ties to school and get all dressed up. And so I'm in there, and I'm putting on my sweater vest and straightening my tie, and suddenly my mom comes barrel in. What are you 
Joey, put on a tie, get out through the fire next door. I, my room was on the opposite end of the house. I had no idea how crazy of a fire it is, and it was right next door. The house burned down, and my mom and my dad had two very, very different levels of urgency in their tone. Um, and I always think of that when I think of urgency in today's parenting. What, where, where, if you were to use that as like a zero to 10 scale, <laughs> there's a fire next door or, hey, there's a fire and we need to get moving. Uh, Carrie, where do, where do you see parents should be today as far as um, that, that level of urgency in developing that radical faith in our kids? Yeah, I definitely see that parents should be toward the top of that scale. Uh, a radical faith is not just about now, it's about the next generations. I, I, like I mentioned, I'm blessed right now to have my son and his two sons in the same house with us. And I'm able to not only continue pouring into my son's life, but to see him pouring into his son's life. And if you read Psalm 78 very, very carefully, it talks about generations worth of people. Our, our children will tell it to their children, will tell it to their children. And there's got to be a root or a core faithfulness that exists first in my heart, so that it's not just that I'm doing the religious deeds that make me look like a good Christian, but it's that I am having a vibrant relationship with Christ myself. And then I'm able to communicate that, pass that on through humility, through teaching, through conversation with my children so that it becomes real for them. And then that in turn, because it's so genuine, is passed on to their kids and so on and so forth. That's my goal. I, I want to see five generations of my family without one child, uh, sorry to steal the phrase, but without one child left behind in terms of their faith. I want them to be just radically sold out for Jesus Christ all the way down. Now, you just mentioned leading by example, uh, firming up your own Christian walk uh, so that they can see how it is that you're living out your faith, instructing your kids, uh, being an impact on your grandkids. This seems like a tall order, Carrie. Um, if somebody is just hearing this for the first time going, wow, I, I just thought if I took my kids to church, put them in youth group, I thought that would be enough. Um, what do you say to that parent? How does somebody get started in, in this Christian parenting, developing a radical faith in their kids? Where do you even start? Well, I understand that feeling of overwhelm, Jefferson, and I totally get it because when I came into this thing called marriage, my wife was raised in a strong Christian family. I was not. I did not really have a clue how to be a leader in the family, how to go about any of that. But what I discovered, which was a great relief to me, is that God wants these things for us and for our children much more than we do. And he has provided the resources that we need in the scriptures through the Holy Spirit who lives in us to give us wisdom and power and strength to do the things that we need to do. And so, first of all, I just got to throw myself on him and I got to say, God, I am helpless in this without you. I need your strength. I need your wisdom. I need your help. But then we've got to take steps of action to see it come about in our lives. And the way I, I like to think of this is if, is if you live in a land where there's a drought and, and you want rain to come. You've you've got to you've got to pray that rain in, but but even more so, say that you're you're just in a sweltering hot condition yourself, and you want to get cooled off. Well, when it starts raining, you got to put yourself in a place where you can get rained on, so that you can get cooled off. And we've got to do that as well. We've got to put ourselves in a position where God's blessing and help can come, and that is through a daily time of of learning the scriptures, not just so we have Bible verses memorized, but so we know the God who wrote them. So we know his heart. So we understand him. So it's a relationship. I, I mentioned earlier about Jesus being radical. Well, why was Jesus radical? It's because he had seen eternity. He had seen the Father. He knew what reality really was all about. And, and we're so distanced from that. We've got to take the time, and it does take time, it does take effort, to get to know that God, to have a close relationship. And that's where we start, is getting ourselves on track. One step at a time. Karen, yeah. we've, got a, we've got a question coming in uh, online. Joel, uh, sounds like we've got somebody reading. Yeah, we have a guest uh, online. He said a good question could be to clarify, simplify. Um, again, it's a complex um, cultural challenges we're facing as, as families and as parents. But is there a way to break it down to an essence maybe in our kind of soundbite culture? Uh, what would be a good way of simplifying ra the term radical faith? Why is it radical? What does that mean? in itself mean? Yeah, how do we live out radical uh, here in the 21st century? Yeah, well, I think, I think radical 
real simply means different than the culture that we're around. And we're not different just for the sake of being different. We're different because we have the God of the universe living inside of us. And so we as individuals Mm -hmm. have to be authentic. We have to be real. We can't just do the church talk and think that's good or do the church thing and think that's good. Mm -hmm. It's got to be affecting us every single day of our lives. And that's that relationship again. Jesus knew his father. He was tight with him. If you read the book of John real carefully, he says, I don't do anything without my father showing me that I should do it. I mean, that's the kind of relationship that we're talking about. Wow. And finally, Carrie, what... um You you talked about a little bit about your own journey, you know, marrying uh, somebody who had a a background, familial background in Christianity to to now these generations upon generations. uh, As you said, no kid left behind as far as a Christian walk goes. But what other results have you seen? Um, What are some people that you've rubbed shoulders with and and seen where people are actually uh, passing down this type of faith to their kids? And uh, I guess what kind of hope can you offer as far as real life families that are doing this? Yeah, well, obviously, I could point you to things that are happening in my family, but we have we have friends, we have neighbors who have who have taken up this mantle as well. And and one couple that I think of right off the bat uh, has has one son of their own, and then they adopted from China, and and some terrible things happened to them while they were in China. Uh, she was pregnant and didn't even know it, and miscarried the baby while they were in China. Oh. And, and so here they are in China adopting this child and all this emotional trauma is going on. But in the background is this vision for passing on a, a radical faith in Christ to their children. They had a son back in the States that we were keeping at the time. And then there they were in China. And, and, and it took them some time to walk through all that emotional baggage from that loss of the child and, and taking on a new one at the same time. But what they discovered was this. God is using them just like he used his son to redeem us. He's using them to redeem this this boy from China. And they named him Josiah. They're raising him in a godly family. And that little boy, he's seven years old. He is such a light. He is such a joy because he's being raised in a family where faith is authentic Hmm. and where it's talked about every day and where it's applied to life practically and where he can see mom and dad really mean this. It's not just words. It's reality. Fantastic. Carrie, thank you so much, not just for our conversation today, but for all the advice that you have uh, available on the web. Your video podcasts are amazing. And of course, uh, for our viewers, you can catch them all on the E-Squared Media Network, on the uh, Christian, uh, Christian Home and Family, as well, as well as Radical Faith for Generations. Carrie, thank you so much. You're welcome, Jefferson. Glad to be here. Have a great day. Yeah. You know, um, Kind of getting to what Carrie was saying, we as parents have a huge responsibility. And and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of parents think, well, sure, I can do what I got to do, but also I, I can just drop the kids off. I mean, we got Sunday school on Sundays. We've got youth group on Wednesdays. And I mean, that'll get the kids going, right? I did the math recently. And basically, if you if you go an hour at church and an hour at youth group, of that time, they're usually singing songs, playing games, doing things. It whittles down to about 25 minutes of teaching time, of really laying out what God wants for our kids' lives. Do that math. Factor in vacations and whatnot. Our kids spend roughly the equivalent of two weeks, two weeks from uh, middle school through the end of high school, two weeks of spiritual preparation for the rest of their lives. We've got a video coming up that talks a little bit about that because in my mind, two weeks is perfectly fine if you're going to be training to flip burgers somewhere. But for a lifelong relationship and for setting that Christian example to the world around us, I think it takes a little bit more. So it's up to us parents. So check out this video and we'll be right back with Pam Rohr. <laughs> 